Welcome to this video which will cover off the essentials for installers fitting Honeywell Sundial RF Squared Pack 3 heating controls for their customers. Sundial RF Squared Pack 3 will allow you to install a programmer, a wireless thermostat and a wireless cylinder thermostat to a stored hot water central heating system. Please check the contents of your Sundial RF Squared Pack 3 box. All the wireless heating controls you need to set up a stored hot water system with single room temperature and one point of hot water temperature control are to be found in the pack. The pack contains a two channel wireless enabled programmer that will individually control the time that the heating and hot water is functioning. A wireless room thermostat that can either be wall mounted or used on a separate stand and a wireless cylinder thermostat that has a transceiver connected to it by a low voltage wire. The pack also contains a printed installer guide, a user guide and a sticker to be added to the flap of the programmer to remind users of the features of the unit. Along the way we'll be looking at how to correctly position the programmer, connecting the programmer to the boiler, correctly positioning the room thermostat, correctly positioning the cylinder thermostat and testing the system including signal strength. For further details, please refer to your Sundial RF Squared manual or visit HoneywellUK.com where all the product manuals can be accessed. Before starting this installation, if you're unsure about any aspect of fitting or wiring a programmer, please seek advice from a registered electrician. Before starting to position the wireless enabled programmer and connect it to the boiler, you must consider where it will eventually be mounted. There are a number of things that need to be thought through. Keep AC mains supply load cables separate from signal wiring. Refer to Code of Practice Standards EN 61000-5-1 and 2 for guidance. After all installation tests, including wireless signal strength tests, use mini trunking to hide wires. Use clips to secure wires away from hot pipes in the boiler. When you're positioning the unit, there are a number of things to consider. Firstly, ease of wiring to other system components, such as zone valves. Honeywell zone valves have a cable approximately 1.5 meters long, and unless you want to give yourself an additional wiring task, it's a good idea to plan ahead, to ensure that the leads will reach the programmer where you are planning to position it. Another crucial factor concerning positioning is maintaining the wireless signal strength at the point where you want to install the programmer or timer. There are a number of simple rules you need to follow regarding wireless signals. Think about the expected range of communications. Within a typical house, Sundial RF squared products should communicate reliably within a 30 meter range. However, it's important to take into consideration that walls and ceilings will weaken the radio frequency or RF signal. The strength of the RF signal reaching the programmer depends on the number of walls and ceilings separating it from the room thermostat, as well as the building construction. Walls and ceilings reinforced with steel or plasterboard walls lined with metal foil reduce the RF signal significantly. It's good practice to consider what metal objects are there in a direct line between the thermostat and the wireless enabled programmer. Is there a metal object within 30 centimeters of the programmer or thermostat? If so, you may be creating a permanent reflector for the signal, which will interfere with operations. In most cases, the wireless signal will find a communication route. Moving the thermostat or programmer 30 centimeters away from the risk of interference should solve the problem. Is the programmer or thermostat mounted onto the wall using a metal mounting box? Standard metal wall boxes may have an effect on operations. We suggest you test signal strength before preparing any permanent fixings. Honeywell uses a unique wireless language across specific frequencies to minimize the risk of clashing wireless signals. Please note that any electronic device emitting a wireless signal in close proximity to the programmer or thermostat can saturate the surrounding area and cause disruption to the signal. We therefore recommend that you mount the product at least one meter away from any other wireless device, including wireless network routers. 
If you're mounting a pair of Honeywell products together, allow at least a 1 meter gap between the two in order to avoid signal saturation. In addition, larger non-wireless electrical items can sometimes emit a radiating signal as part of their normal operation. It's therefore a good idea to mount devices at least one meter away from electrical devices. We'll be describing how to carry out a signal strength test in a later part of this video. The final thing to consider regarding positioning is how the programmer will be accessed by the user. Make sure you take into account the requirements of the people who will be using the programmer on a regular basis. Ensure that the position you choose protects the unit from the environment around it. For instance, do not install it behind a door or in an area where it will be regularly knocked. Connecting the programmer to the boiler. Please follow all the instructions provided by the boiler manufacturer and ensure you comply with all relevant building regulations concerning gas and electrical safety. For the purposes of this video, we're assuming that you've provided a correct connection between the boiler and the wireless-enabled programmer. If you're replacing an old programmer, the Sundial RF2 programmer fits on most industry-standard backplates, making it the ideal choice when you need to upgrade a programmer. On the Honeywell website, there are compatibility guides that make it easy to decide on what product to replace with what. Wiring the motorized zone valve into the heating system. This is carried out in exactly the same way as you would wire a zone valve into a wired system. We recommend using a Honeywell 10-way junction box. Follow the boiler manufacturer's instructions on providing a wire between the junction box and the boiler. Locate the junction box so that you don't have to extend the cables. Then the details of what to wire between the 10-way junction box and the motorized zone valve can be found in the Sundial RF2 installation instructions. These instructions can also be found in the Honeywell wiring guide, available in both printed and electronic format. Positioning the room thermostat. The Sundial RF2 room thermostat can be either wall or surface mounted. It comes complete with its own table stand. If you're mounting the device on a wall, there are a number of things that must be considered, such as compliance with Part M building regulations. The performance of all room thermostats is affected by the measured airflow across them, which depends on the location of the room thermostat. If a room thermostat is poorly located, the airflow will not be representative of the rest of the room, and the temperature control will be adversely affected. Locate the room thermostat in the heated area or the zone requiring control on a wall at a height of about 1.2 meters, where it has a free flow of air around it. Never sight a thermostat in a room with another major heat source, such as an open fire, gas fire or cooker. In an unheated room. In a room fitted with radiator thermostats or ensure that the radiator thermostat is set to maximum in this room in direct sunlight, behind furniture or curtains, in a warm draft, in a cold draft, directly opposite a radiator or other heat source, directly above a radiator or other heat source. Don't forget that electrical appliances emit considerable amounts of heat, for example televisions, DVD players and hi-fis, in a corner of two walls, in a corner at the junction of the wall and ceiling. Some thermostat positions may need special consideration. For instance, a thermostat mounted on a cold external wall can cause overheating of the living space. This is not a position we recommend. If it is the desired location, you may have to set the temperature at a lower point to compensate. Positioning the cylinder thermostat. Carefully cut away an area of insulation, one-third from the bottom of the cylinder. Make sure it's large enough for the wireless cylinder thermostat to be placed against a metal area of the copper water cylinder, and that the small temperature sensor on the rear of the device is in solid contact with the bare metal. When you're mounting the thermostat to the cylinder, make sure the spring clip that surrounds the thermostat is tightly holding the cylinder in place and will not fall off. 
The wireless transceiver is not contained within the cylinder thermostat, as the metal water cylinder will affect wireless communications. Communications between the thermostat unit and the transceiver are by a low voltage single wire that needs to be installed before the system is fully commissioned. It's important that the transceiver is positioned at least 1 foot or 300 millimeters away from the water cylinder. It's important that you get a good contact with the cylinder. Poor contact will result in erratic temperature sensing, which in turn will cause the transmitter to communicate more often and reduce battery life. Ensure you carry out a signal strength test before you finally fix the transceiver into position. Testing the system Firstly, power up the wired programmer. Do that before taking the small cardboard tabs out of the battery compartments of the room thermostat and the wireless transceiver, which is connected to the cylinder stat. This will speed up the system initialization tests, so that it's ready for you to test quicker. It's a good idea to leave the system for a full 5 minutes to establish stable communications. Why not set the date and time on the programmer while you are waiting? There's a quick way to make sure all the components are communicating, however it doesn't show the strength of the signal. We recommend that you carry out a full signal strength test at each location, after you've established that the system is at least communicating. First, note the set point that appears on the room thermostat. Next, go to the programmer and press the green OK Next button for at least 8 seconds. The display will show the screen for the actual room temperature. Then press the plus button and the screen will now change to show the room set point of the room thermostat. This proves that you have a wireless communication connection between the programmer and the room thermostat. If you've installed a cylinder thermostat, you can do the same by selecting the water channel and using the green OK Next button procedure again. Testing the signal strength It's important to know the signal strength of the communications being received by the different units, so we recommend that after you've established the units are talking to each other, you then carry out a system strength test at each of the final locations for the units. Position yourself with the room thermostat in the same position that you'll be installing the unit, either by the wall on which it will be installed, or in the position that the freestanding unit will be predominantly used. Hold down the power button for 2 seconds until the standby symbol is displayed. Hold down the up and down buttons together for 3 seconds until INST appears in the display. Press the down button, continuous is now displayed. Press the down button for 3 seconds to enter test mode. You are now in test mode. Signal strength test is entered from test mode by holding the down button for 3 seconds until the display shows SS. Top tip! The programmer measures the strength of the DT92E room thermostat signal every 5 to 10 seconds and will communicate this to the DT92E room thermostat as a number between 0 and 5. Remember, the value drops to 0 briefly as each new signal strength measurement is made. This is not a sign that the signal is unstable. Our signals are measured in strengths of 1 to 5. Under 3, we recommend that you change the location of the unit to get a better signal strength. If the signal strength is 3 or over, then the unit will function correctly. However, if by moving the unit a short distance you can improve the signal strength to 4 or 5, you should. Even moving the unit a short distance such as 12 inches can make all the difference. To carry out a signal strength test on the wireless transceiver connected to the cylinder thermostat. Before fixing it permanently, take the battery operated transceiver close to the programmer. Press the CS92A transceiver button once. The green light should come on. If it doesn't, reinsert the batteries and try again. With the green light on, the red light should start to flash to indicate the status. Step 1 Hold the transceiver approximately 1 meter from the ST9420C programmer and check the signal strength is high, 
three or more. The ST9420C programmer measures the strength of the transceiver signal every five seconds and will communicate this to the transceiver as a number between zero and five. The transceiver will then indicate this number by flashing its red light a number of times in succession, followed by a pause of between two and four seconds. The number of flashes is equivalent to the signal strength number. A signal strength of three or more is recommended to ensure reliable communications. This confirms that the two units are in the condition they left the factory and are bound together. If the red light repeatedly flashes 0.1 seconds on, 0.9 seconds off without pausing, this means the transceiver is not bound to the ST9420C programmer. Refer to the installer manual for steps on how to re-establish communications. Step 2. Whilst staying in signal strength test mode, take the transceiver to the preferred location and connect the cylinder. This will allow you to test the signal strength at the final location and ensure you can also install the cylinder thermostat in its desired location and have enough connection wire to ensure the system is fully functional. Wait for 10 seconds and check the signal strength is 3 or more. If it is, the transceiver is ready to mount. If the signal strength is less than 3, reposition the transceiver within the local area plus or minus 0.5 meters to see if the signal strength improves. If this fails, you may need to reposition the transceiver completely and extend the cable to the sensor element. Exit signal strength test by pressing the button again. The transceiver will time out of this mode after 10 minutes, but may indicate a sensor fault if the sensor element is not connected within this time period. Now that you know both the units are communicating, it's time to commission the system. This will be covered in another of the Honeywell Sundial RF Squared installer video guides. However, Please note that full installer and user guides can be viewed and downloaded from the Honeywell website at www.honeywelluk.com and details of how to contact our technical helpline can also be accessed there.